AI to Adobe After Effects, the place to learn how to create amazing graphics and special effects. I'm Phil Ebener, a professional motion graphics artist and video creator. I've edited and added graphics to thousands of videos for some amazing companies like Ghirardelli Chocolate, Participant Media, and UC Berkeley, just to name a few. At the end of this course, you'll be able to create animations, 3D effects, amazing titles, and much more for your own video projects. The course walks you through the program from the very beginning, understanding the layout and tools available to you, knowing how to create basic animations, working with shapes, building a 3D composition, adding styles to your layers, working with green screen and other visual effects, and finally, how to export these graphics for use in your other videos. I designed this course for video creators who want to take their skills to the next level by adding special effects, titles, and motion graphics to their own videos. So if that sounds like you, then this is the perfect course for you to join. Hey guys, and welcome to the After Effects course. This is Phil Ebener, and thank you for being here. In this lesson, I'm going to go over what we're going to be learning in this course because there is so much and uh, just get excited. So let's just, I have a list of topics that are going to be in this course and there's so many more but let's just go over a few of them. Uh, the first couple sections are going to be about the basics of After Effects or so we're, we're going to get into the program layout, the basic tools, how do you use those, how to start a composition and basically starting a project. Then we're going to get into the shapes and creating masks and text and just basically starting to create our video projects and what the basics of that 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 is. And with that, we're going to then transition into animating all of those shapes and text and which is the basics basic of After Effects animating, creating motion, creating, you know, rotation creating opacity changes, transitions between, you know, different scenes and whatnot. We're also going to have a whole section on green screen and advanced green screen editing in After Effects. We're going to talk about the preset effects and some text effects that, you know, will really make your project spark um, and pop. And, you know, for example, we're going to talk about, you know, how to create a page turn of Effects where you know it looks like your compositions are turning like a page or an image is turning like a page in a book. We're going to talk about some cool effects that you know make your you can make billowing clouds out of. We're going to talk about lighting and how to add lighting to your 3D or non 3D sets, which brings me into another topic 3D compositions. We're going to talk about um, creating 3D compositions in After Effects. Uh, and we're going to have a couple really cool demos where you kind of just follow along with me as I create cool scenes, such as a uh, space scene where we have, you know, a star field with the earth and the moon spinning around the earth. So that one's going to be really cool. We're going to talk about layer styles and what that means, different effects, such as, you know, adding drop shadow and inner shadow and glows and all sorts of things to your different layers. Then we're going to talk about exporting, what the best export settings are for YouTube, the highest quality, exporting with a transparent background for titles and other things. And then there's so much more within that. That's I haven't even covered, began to cover what this class is all about really. Um, but there's so much more. So come along. I go at a good pace so um, don't worry about that. Each lesson is going to be follow along with me. I'm, you're going to see me as I use After Effects. And um, one thing to note, though, too, is that uh, you know you don't need After Effects to take this course, but it's a really great thing to have uh, so you can practice along with me. And um, I also teach you in the next lesson how to get a free trial of After Effects so you don't have to worry about having to buy a program, buying Adobe After Effects for this course because you can get a free trial for 30 days and that'll be a great amount of time to test it out, take this class and see if you want to purchase it. Um, and on that note too, I teach the class in CS 5.5 but no matter what you're using, um, the basics of After Effects are the same so whether you, you're using CS 6, you're using CS 3, 4, 5, whatever, um, this class is perfect for learning the basics. 
All the program layouts are very similar. All the effects are very similar. There isn't much difference. There might be a new effect here, there. There might be a new button style um, here, or there between the different uh, versions of After Effects. But honestly, um, you know the basics are the basics. I learned in CS4 or 3, I believe, uh, when I started using After Effects, and the basics are still the same. The process of creating After Effects compositions and animations are it's still the same. And that's what you're going to be learning in this class. So I'm really excited that you're here. I just can't wait to get going. And I can't wait to see what you create with all the techniques you learn in this class. Say you just opened up After Effects. It's one of the most confusing programs out there, especially in the Adobe Suite. If you've opened up Photoshop or Illustrator or InDesign or another design uh, media related program from Adobe, you open up After Effects and it looks completely foreign. Uh, and even if you've done Adobe Premiere Pro before and have become proficient in that editing software, After Effects is a complete new ball game. So let's dive right into it. For all of these these lessons, please watch in uh, full screen if possible. If you can, watch it in 1080p HD so that you can see everything clearly, see the buttons that I'm pressing, see the text that's on the program so you know what's going on. So this is After Effects and I'm just going to go over the different areas of it one by one in this lesson. So we're going to talk about the toolbar, the project folder, the timeline, the composition canvas, and then all these things over here on the right side that uh, you'll be using, including effects and presets and all that sort of stuff. So starting off at the top, um, and of course we're going to get more into what each of these are in future lessons, but right now uh, I just want to tell you that this is the toolbar. Similar to in Photoshop uh, or even in Premiere Pro where you have your toolbar in the bottom right hand corner, here are all your tools that you can turn your mouse into. So for example, you can turn your mouse into a hand tool, a zoom tool, rotate, a camera, text, pen, shape, mask, eraser, puppet pin tool, all sorts of different tools um, available for you. And in this course, we're going to look through most of them and learn how to do the, how to use them properly. So, and they're kind of similar. I mean, if you've used Photoshop, you know kind of what a hand tool or the zoom tool is. But for in After Effects and doing motion graphics, you use them in different ways. And we'll talk about that too. Down below it is your project folder. This is where you keep all your documents. Uh, all your files, you will import your video or any textures or layers or or basic source files into this project folder over here on the left and you can organize it. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, and then down below at the pro bottom of the project uh, bin is are a few more options, a few more tools such as organization tools such as you know, adding folders to uh, organize your footage, or uh, creating a new composition, deleting, etc. Down here is a timeline, and it's a little bit more intense than, again, Adobe Premiere Pro. Everything that has to do with After Effects is more intense than your standard video editing program. Uh, all these things up here on the top bar will go. Th we'll go through in future lessons um, but for now you just need to know this is the timeline and it works basically like a timeline you can hear see here the numbers depending on how big or small your or long or short your project is uh, you'll see different time up here mine, mine is over two minutes so you see zero seconds, fifteen seconds, etc. you can zoom in on this by either clicking this down here, the zoom in to frame level tool, the slider, you can zoom in, or you can click this top light gray bar and click the yellow at the end and zoom in as well to your timeline. 
Right here in the middle is your composition canvas. This is where you'll be actually seeing what you're doing. You'll add your layers, create motion, and this is you know basically your viewer. Unlike Premiere Pro or other video editing software, there aren't two videos players. Um, there isn't like a preview and your composition. It's just one. Over here on the right side, uh, you'll see your effects. And in After Effects, obviously, from the title, we use lots of effects. And we'll go over a lot of them in the future. Up here is just more information about the files and the tool, the layers that you're working with. And you'll notice me talking about layers a lot. Layers basically meaning uh, different uh, layers of video, of shapes, of text within your project. And again, in this preview uh, little section over here, you'll you can control uh, the, the the timeline. You can play your video, pause it, etc. You can see the frame rate and all that sort of thing. There's lots more. Uh, there are a lot more things you can add to your window uh, that we'll talk about in future lessons when they come up, such as character. And you just go to window and. Uh, click on a different option up here and so for example character brings up font choices and and styles and you can customize your your workspace by basically going to the edge of a section clicking and dragging just to make bigger or smaller or you could grab the top left of each little tab dragging out so I'm hold I clicked and dragged and then moving it around. So I'm going to put that on the bottom. And now I have my character box in a separate tab, separate than my effects and presets, which is nice so that I can always have my character uh, tab open. I might want to have my paragraph open as well behind my character, so I just click it on and then put it up here next to my character. I want to talk to you about starting a new composition which is the very first thing you'll be doing if you're starting an After Effects project. So last time I had a new composition already started. You saw the black canvas, video canvas, but if you just open up After Effects for the first time this is what you're gonna see. To start a new composition, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Up here at the top, you can just go up to Composition and select New Composition. As you see, you can press Command N on a Mac or I believe Control N on a PC. Or you can go down to this little video icon. It looks like a little film strip down here in the Project folder bin and click that. So once you click that, you get this dialog box open and you'll notice it's pre pretty similar to other video editing programs where it asks you for a name so we'll just do uh, practice after effects that's what we'll call it then you have different sizes so you can choose a preset size from this preset menu and you know usually those are fine if you want to pick one of those you should there's no right or wrong answer for picking the size of a composition. Sometimes you're using uh, you're using After Effects along with Adobe Premiere Pro or a video editing software to add effects to a video that you're already working on. On so you want to make sure that the the settings are the same. But if you're just working in After Effects, you know just choose whatever settings you want. If you want it in HD, 1920 by 1080 pixels, you can just input those right here. Say you want 1280 by 720, you can choose that. If you don't want this aspect ratio of 16 by 9, or 16 to 9, which is the typical eight, uh, aspect ratio for videos nowadays, you can unlock it by unchecking that box and you know putting whatever, however many pixels you want. You can actually relock it, and then if you increase by just clicking and dragging to the left or right, it keeps that aspect ratio, even if you're just clicking on width and increasing the width, 
it also increases the height. So I'm going to go back to 1920 by 1080. Actually, I'll do 1280 by 720. Uh, obviously, a smaller size composition will take up less uh, RAM and memory and keep your computer a little bit faster. Uh, down here, are square pixels, that's, you know, just leave it at squares pixels. Frame rate, again, another thing, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just what you want to do. Or if you're using another this for another video project, match the other video project's frame rate. 23976, or also known as just typically 398, 23.98 uh, is a good frame rate for video projects. Resolution, this you can change after, so you don't have to really worry about this. This is just when you're, you're playing back your projects uh, while you build them out. It's, you can show it in full frame, full resolution, half, third, quarter, or even customize it. Uh, you might find that your computer is a little bit slow, and it's too slow to sh play the full quality of a video, uh, so you might want to do a quarter. I'll show you how to change that later, too. And then, lastly, you have your start time code and the duration. Duration, obviously, is just the duration of your clip. These things you can change later, but say you're editing a title sequence, 10 seconds would be good. And you can start your time code later, but most of you, you just want to leave it at zero. And background color, that's the last thing, is if you want, you can um, change this to another color, white or whatever you want, but I would just leave it at black. And there's some advanced settings, but we don't need to get into those. You click OK. And there you have it. There is our new composition. Down here on the bottom, you can change the size of it. I usually say fit up to 100%, and that fills this box right here, this canvas. And you can make it bigger or smaller, depending on what you need room for outside of it, if you need more room for the effects bins or the timeline or whatever. Uh, here down at the bottom is the resolution, so you can just change this if you want. See the other things you might need to know. Uh, this uh, toggle transparency grid. By clicking this, it gives you this transparency grid, which shows you what is transparent. So say you want to create a project that just has text or titles, and you want to put it over a video clip in Adobe Premiere Pro, it's good to know what is transparent and what's not transparent. Uh, there's a lot of other things down here. The other thing I'd like to show you is this button down here to the right of the size. You can click that and there's some cool tools. So there's a title action safe. So if you have to pay attention to titles for uh, to make sure your titles don't go outside of these boxes for like television or, or something like that, this is a good resource. Or if you want to use the proportional grid, I always use this when I'm creating titles and text just to make sure things are centered, aligned properly, etc. And you can just go ahead and click it off as well. That's it for now. That is starting a new composition. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. How to import footage into your After Effects project. So there's a few different ways to import footage. And why would you be importing footage? It would be for if you have you know textures or images or you know photos or cartoons or graphics or something that you have outside that you've already made or or that you've bought from online or you downloaded and you want to bring it into a project i do this all the time with textures with you know logos with uh, video you can bring in video obviously and so there's a few different ways to do that. You can go up to File and go ahead and Import and just go ahead and click File. Or you can, as you saw, press Command-I on a Mac as the hotkey. And then you just go to your, find your file. So I'm going to go find some file. I have this in my texture. And then you just go ahead and press open and there it is in your project right there like that 
You can also, as I saw, you saw, just press Command I. You can do that. You can select multiple files. You can select all of them and import. Or lastly, you can just go to your Finder or on your PC if you uh, just go to your Documents. You can find your files and you can drop them into After Effects. So that's easily how you import files into your project. Another thing is organization. Organization is very key to being a video editor or a motion graphics artist. If you've taken any of my other classes, especially my video editing classes, you know that I love organization. So keep everything organized. And uh, I usually keep folders for all my textures, for all my compositions, for all my titles, for all my, you know, images for all my video and the way I do that is just clicking this new folder and I usually name it uh, whatever I want so you can just highlight click on your folder and then press the enter key and that allows you to change the name so I'll change this to textures and I'm just going to select all these I'm holding command down and selecting my textures and bringing them into textures. Then I'll create a new folder. You can right click and just say new folder. I'll do compositions. That's what I call all my different videos that I'm creating. Uh, all my sequences. If you, you know, if you're a video editor, you often see see or hear the word sequence in After Effects, I call them compositions. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's, you know, how you import footage and that's how you organize. So keep your footage organized. Did a couple quick layers that we can uh, demonstrate the tools with. And as you see here, I, uh, there's two layers down here on the bottom. There's this deep green solid and this is some text. You can't see this is some text because this eyeball over here on the bottom left is turned off. If I turn that on, you can see it. So that's one thing you will be playing with is toggling on and off layers to see them. Um, you could also uh, rename your layers by just clicking on it and uh, pressing enter. So I'll do that and call this green star. Um, if you double click a layer it will open it up in this layer editor um, and you know, you, I'm not going to teach you about that right now, so I would just go back to my composition tab. So, we're talking about tools though. So first you have your selection tool, and when you hover over these tools, it shows you in parentheses the hotkey for them. So for selection tool, it's V. So selection is basically um, for clicking and moving things around on your canvas. Um, and selecting different layers. So if you have both layers up, I can select my text or my star. I can select my text, move it around, move my star around. It also helps when you are um, changing the size of something. So you can grab a corner of something and change the size. Um, if you grab a corner and hold shift down, it locks the aspect so you can't stretch or squeeze it. And same with the text, you can click and drag and change the size of your text that way. The hand tool, this is for moving your canvas itself, so it's not moving the layer, it's just the canvas. And this works well with the zoom tool, so I'll show you both of them. So the zoom tool is hotkey Z, and it automatically shows up as uh, the positive zoom magnifying glass. So this zooms in. And if you press the Alt or Option key, you can turn it into a zoom out uh, tool. So say you zoom in, but you want to move downwards, you can select the hand tool and move the canvas down if you need to like, change something down here on the bottom left star point or whatever. You can, uh, so I press Z and zoom out and you know move your canvas around that way you can get your canvas back to set, being centered and fully uh, viewable uh, full full size by just clicking fit 
up to 100% down here on the bottom left of the composition canvas. The rotation tool is for rotating text, so or to layers rather. So you just click a layer and you can rotate by with the rotate tool. So that's pretty cool. Um, the uh, camera tool, this is more for if you're doing 3D work, which we'll talk about in the future. So we won't discuss that now. The pan behind tool, a hotkey Y, is very special because, and you're going to use this a lot, is especially if you are um, bringing in images or different layers, and I'll show you more of that in the future of when you would actually use this, but it basically moves the anchor point of your layer. So right now my anchor point is for the star is in the center, and that's great. So when I rotate it with the rotate tool, um, it just rotates from the center. But what if I want it to rotate from one of these points? I take the pan behind tool, I s click and move, and I, you can see that it moves. Um, it moves this little circular cross in the middle. And I'm just going to move that to one of the apexes. I think that's what you call it. And now I go to my rotate and see it rotates on that point. So that's kind of cool. So for text, uh, right now my my anchor point is down here in the bottom left and that's because it is left justified. Say I want to move it to the middle so that I can rotate from the middle. And just go ahead and do it like that. So if if it was on the bottom left and I use the rotate tool, it would rotate from the bottom left anchor point. So that is the pan behind tool. The shape tool, it creates shapes so you can um, create new shapes just like so. If you hold down the shape and button you will see different types of shapes. So you can do pentagons, squares, circles, etc. If you have a layer selected, this also acts, acts as a masking tool. So as you can see, I created a mask, but we're going to talk about that more in the future. Same with the pen tool. This is for creating masks, like so. Or if it's not selected, you can create um, custom shapes. All these things we'll talk more about in, the f in future lessons. Text, it's for adding text, so you just click the text tool and type. And that, those are the only tools I want to show you for now. These, the rest of these are more for image editing. You got the brush tool, the clone stamp tool, erase tool, roto brush tool, puppet pin tools. Those are very advanced topics that I don't want to get into yet. But those are your basic tools in After Effects. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you have any questions, please let me know. You are a star. Believe it. I totally believe it. You're taking this class and you're going to be making some awesome, awesome After Effects projects in the future. So believe it. You are a star. And... I will see you next time. In this lesson, I just want to show you quickly how to place your footage on the timeline and uh, the basic edits or, or ways to edit your your layers. Um, so previously, I had impo imported some textures, so I'm just going to show you how to place them on your timeline. So you can just click and drag and drop them on your timeline down here like so. Then, as you can see, it placed it on my timeline, but I want to move it so that it is at the start of my timeline. I can also just stretch out the end by going to the the end of the clip and clicking and dragging when you see the double arrow sided arrows. So now I have my brick wall. I can also I'm just going to delete this by clicking on it and pressing delete. You can also just click and drag and drop it right here in the middle of the composition. 
So now I have this layer. Um, and so the basic edits, uh, well, with your your pointer tool or your selection tool, you can you know change the size of it. Um, you can move it around. Uh, you can rotate it with the rotate tool. Um, and then the last basic thing is opacity. But another way to get to all of these edits, editing options, is on the timeline. And in the next lesson, we're going to go over more about all these different things. But for now, let's just, on our brick wall layer, click this triangle, which brings down another option called Transform. I'm going to click that tri triangle next to Transform and we have a few different options. So as we move this around, you will see these numbers change for position. If you uh, increase the size, you will see the size change as well. So 16% to 86.5%, or if I just squeeze it, Let's see it's 21% and 86.5%. If I rotate it, you know, you get the point. It rotates. You can also edit these these numbers and or the positions by just clicking and dragging these numbers or clicking and typing in a number. And this is really nice when you are when you just want to move something along the y-axis or the x-axis, uh, axis, uh, axis, sorry, um, and you don't want to like mess around with the other axis. So um, you can play with the position. You can play with the anchor point, which uh, again you can change with the pan behind tool. You can play with the scale, you can play with the rotation, and here you can play with the opacity, um, which is pretty cool. So, um, this also, you can use hotkeys to bring these up, and so we're getting a little bit into the timeline, but I'm just going to go ahead and talk about it right now. So, say you don't have this um, drop down menu open say it's just like this, if you have this layer selected and you press S, it will bring up scale. And then you can edit scale that way. If you press R, it will bring up rotation. And you can edit the rotation. P will bring up the position. A will bring up the anchor point. And T will bring up opacity. Also, you can re remember T for transparency and edit it that way. And so that is how you add layers to your timeline. Um, here I'll add another layer to show you. So this one is really big. So I'm going to bring up the scale size function and you know decrease the size of this. Maybe I'll rotate both of them so I can select both by pressing shift and selecting the other one or command and selecting both. Press R, and you can rotate both at the same time. And then I'll just move one to the left side of the screen and one to the right side of the screen. So that, you know, this could be the beginning of some sort of, of video. Um, today, let's continue talking about the timeline. Last time we talked a little bit about the basic functions and edit, edits you can make using this drop down menu in the timeline when you add layers to your composition but there are so many other little buttons and things that you want to be aware of so um, going from left to right basically you have this eyeball that turns on and off a layer this circle one, it solos a layer, so if you have a bunch of layers but you only want to pay attention to one, you can turn on the solo layer and solo uh, layer. Lock, this, this lock will lock a layer so you can't make any changes to it. That's often helpful. 
Um, you can change the color of your layers. This helps in organizing, you know, different sections of your animations or different parts, um, different, uh, you know, you can, you can organize a uh, group, uh, all your photos into a group, all your text into, with colors, however you want to do that. You have your layer name. Um, these next few ones I'm not going to talk about down here, uh, but then you have a couple buttons over here. You have a blur function, a motion blur option that you can check on and off, and this turns on motion blur when you're animating, and this makes you know your animations look a little bit more natural. Uh, you have this also this. 3D cube and this turns your layer into a 3D layer and we have a whole chapter about that. Parenting again we'll have we'll talk about that in the future but basically you can lock a layer to another layer so basically if you parent this sidewalk layer to a the brick wall layer whatever you do to the brick wall layer you will do to the sidewalk layer. So see, say I want to change this the scale. See how the sidewalk layer is locked to the brick wall layer. Um, if you do this toggle switches modes button down here, you'll come up with another some more options. This mode, blending mode um, button will bring up all sorts of blending modes, and these are really fun to play with. We'll talk about those more. It's basically different ways that you know your your layers blend with each other. So for example, we have you know a vivid color, classic difference, you know, it just it makes different effects for when you have layers overlay lapping each other. Um, this preserve underlying transparency, you know, these things are very advanced, so we'll do those in la later lessons. Up here at the top, um, you the one you will need to pay attention to right attention to right now is this motion blur. So you have to click this motion blur on to make sure that the motion blur is actually set. What I mean by that is if you don't have this checked but you have motion blur set for s particular layers, even if you um, render this out, it won't have motion blur unless you enable it by pressing this motion blur button right there. There's different um, there's different uh, options up here but those are more advanced so for now we'll just stick to the basics again as we talked about last in one of the first lessons this is your timeline you see the frames and the time at the up top you can zoom in by this top light gray bar clicking on the yellow edge uh, you can uh, zoom into your work area by this bottom light gray bar and you can move it around by clicking the gray in the center and sliding it or increasing the length of time by clicking the yellow edges then you have your um, your workplace where wherever you want it to be so say you have an animation in the first couple seconds and you only want to pay attention to that then you have it here to render out your footage um, to play it, you can't just press the space bar. Um, typically, if you have a lot of animations or edits, you are going to have to press um, on a Mac, Control Zero is going to render it out. And you can tell it's rendered out because it a little green bar appears above your rendered out portion, like that. If you have a keyboard that has a number pad to the right side of your letters, uh, you can press the zero on the number pad to, to uh, render out and play your footage. So again, just pressing spacebar, uh, it might work, but 
typically you'll have to render it out by pressing control zero to actually play so it's a lot different than you know your regular video editor Adobe Premiere Pro Final Cut iMovie it's not something where you just go press play you know all the time you don't just put your your timer your little uh, line in it at three seconds your marker at three seconds and press play um, you have to be very intentional about when you play and render it out because it takes a lot of time and computer energy to and memory to render out your footage and play it for you and you know you'll get the hang of it as we move forward with you know actually starting to animate and do things in After Effects these are still lessons just to get you you know prepared to to start your projects because After Effects is such a robust and um, confusing program at the start but once you get the hang of it you're gonna love it and you're gonna be able to make some awesome stuff with it so that's all I want to talk to you for now about the timeline and finally we're gonna start getting into actually animating and doing what After Effects does in the next few lessons so